After my detour, I'm back on the road again, heading northeast towards Ratanakiri province. The going can be slow, especially in the wet season, as I soon found out. A truck has become stuck in the mud, and a small traffic jam soon builds up. Some people decide it's better to walk, rather than wait. But as luck would have it, the Cambodian army are driving past, and stop to help. Passengers, the local people and the soldiers join together to get the traffic moving again. As we cross over one of the many rivers in the region, its overflowing banks show us that the wet season has well and truly started. My first stop is the friendly town of Ban Lung. I'm here to find a guide who will take me into one of Cambodia's largest national parks, Virache. However, before I head there, I want to try out an alternative, more traditional means of transport, and it's not the moto. Although elephants have been used for hundreds of years to help people in Cambodia, more recently they've been used for ecotourism. In addition to this, Ban Lung has the mystical lake of Boeng Yak Lom only a few kilometres down the road. The rise in ecotourism is certainly a good thing for people living in and around Ban Lung because it means that people have an alternative income to the illegal wildlife trading that used to occur here. At least that's what I thought until I visited Ban Lung Market. Unfortunately, there was still one shop in Ban Lung that was selling the fur, horns and teeth. They would have generated more money in the long term if they'd been left alive and in the wild. I soon find an ex-hunter as a guide and head north to one of the villages just inside Virache National Park's buffer zone. My plan was to trek into the park for a week to see the extent of any damage done by illegal logging or poaching for the illegal wildlife trade. We buy some food and provisions, then head off towards the national park, passing a shrine to the forest spirits as we do so. Virache is an enormous national park, so we have no idea what we'll find next. A few hours into the trek, something doesn't seem quite right. There doesn't seem to be any old large trees around. I have a sinking feeling in my stomach as I realise that illegal loggers have already been to this area. We cross a small river already swollen by the rains and then come across something that is totally devastating for the national park, an illegal logging camp. Logging of old trees like the one we saw is not sustainable. They take hundreds of years to grow back and you only get short term profits. The oldest trees also provide homes for hundreds of different animals. Vital for a national park to be successful through tourism. Areas that still have their old trees are also cooler and more open than the hot and humid part we were in. We press on further, hoping to find an area of the park that hasn't been logged. Several hours and many more rivers later, we decide to set up camp as the rain becomes torrential. Once our hammocks are set up, it's time to have some dinner and also a chance to talk to my guide properly. He tells me that although he used to be a hunter, he prefers what he's doing now. His job as a guide means that he gets paid regularly and a decent wage. He also explains that when an area is logged, 
the wildlife disappears with it, which is why it's so important that areas like Virache are protected properly. Warm and dry in my hammock, the drumming of the rain soon sends me to sleep. As morning arrives, we find ourselves in a lot of trouble. The heavy rains during the night have turned the stream alongside us into a raging torrent. Taking our guide's advice, we decide it's safer to turn back now while we still have time. It's disappointing to know I can't get any further into Viruche, but then I did choose to come in the wet season. We decide to cut our losses and head back to the guide's village. But I'll definitely be returning to Viruche. It has enormous potential for tourism. It is also spectacularly beautiful. And it would truly be a crime if this area was destroyed by the short-sighted greed of loggers and illegal wildlife traders. Once we've returned safely to the village, we celebrate by opening a jar of rice wine. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Cambodia is a fascinating country with so much potential. However, to reach that potential, it must make sure its natural heritage is properly protected. If it does so, it will continue to prosper and grow. If it doesn't, then Cambodia will lose something it can never get back. Thank you.